So you should be able to then look at a molecule and the way it's drawn and determine if it's polar or nonpolar. But sometimes it can be a little bit tricky because, of course, molecules can ha have all kinds of crazy shapes, right? Now this is carbon dioxide, CO2. Chem guy, how come it's bonded like that? Why did you put two lines in between? Is that two bonds? Is that four electrons in there? Yep, yep. And well, how do I know that? Just, just calm down. It's going to be later, okay, in the explanation as we go through the series here. But here's the deal. Carbon dioxide is this shape. It's a linear type of shape, and it's got double bonds in it. Now here's the thing. Does this molecule have in it bonds that are polar? Absolutely. So, what do we call a polar bond again? Well, okay, no, not again, but what do we call a polar bond? Well, because there's two poles here, and look, the oxygen, by the way, on the periodic table is more electronegative than carbon. So we draw an arrow here, and then we draw an arrow from the carbon to the oxygen here. This is the more partially positive end, and these ends are more partially negative. So, this has two poles, so we call it a dipole. So does this molecule have dipoles in it or polar bonds? You bet it does. But overall, if you think of these poles as being pulls, this pull in this direction cancels out this pull in this direction here. It's like if I said, okay, so one, one person pulls me here and the identical twin pulls me here. Where am I going? Nowhere. I'm not being pulled. Uh, with any net force upon me. One, one going this way, one going that way equally, and that means that there's no pull. No pull, non-polar. Okay, so, and by the way, if you just went like this instead, where would I go if I was pulled in with identical force here and here? I would go there, right? And so there is a pull there, and it would be polar, and that's why water in its bent shape is actually polar, but if it was linear, it would be non-polar. Okay? And water is not linear. It's bent always. Okay, so here's the thing. So this molecule is said to possess, it has no dipole moment. There's no moment in there where you're going to have a situation where this is going to have partially positive and negative regions because these arrows, these vectors, these lines cancel out because they're the same pull in opposite directions. So that would be nonpolar. Oh, by the way, if you put a sulfur there, the pulls would not be equal. This one would have a larger pull than that one. And so even though that those, lines, those, those arrows look like they cancel, you do understand, don't you, that if they're different elements with different electronegativities, the pulls are going to be different, and that's going to be a polar molecule. Not too polar, but in this case, but polar enough. So that would have a dipole moment. Then when we have the oxygen there, however, that has no dipole moment. But Kim, now how am I going to know all these shapes and everything? Like, how do I know if something's going to be polar or nonpolar? Well, then you've got to know about these shapes, and I'm going to teach that to you coming up. But first, let's talk about the energy of these bonds and how we make ionic bonds and covalent bonds.